Day 68, page 272, rotational kinematics, problem number 45. This is the classic example of conservation of angular momentum. We're using capital L for angular momentum. Equals your rotational inertia, moment of inertia, times your rotational speed. It's the same thing as conservation of linear momentum when we have P equals MV. Your initial momentum must equal your final momentum. Momentum number one equals momentum number two before and after your event. So this person's changing their rotational inertia by changing their body configuration when you tuck into a smaller size, essentially you're lessening your rotational inertia I and therefore as I goes down by say a factor of seven and your omega will go up by a factor of seven. They're directly, they're inversely proportional. So in, in other words, we have I1 omega 1 before this guy goes into his tuck equals I2 omega 2 after he goes out of his uh, after he spreads, uh, when he goes after he goes into the tuck. So this is before he tucks in, this is after he's tucked in. So if we re re rearrange things, I sub 2 over I sub 1 equals omega sub 1 over omega sub 2. That looks wrong, but it's, it's correct if you do the algebra here. And then we plug in, it says that omega 2 is 450%, or in other words, 4.5 times bigger than omega 1. So that's why I said 4.5 omega 1 down here for, omega, I plugged in for omega 2. You rearrange all this, the, the the um, omegas cancel, and you divide to get the decimal, move things around, and you get I sub 2 is basically 20% of I1. In other words, your rotational inertia went down by a factor of 4.5, and the speed went up by a factor of 4.5 when you tuck in. Same thing happens when you're an ice skater, as we mentioned in class. When they tuck in, and bring their arms and legs in, their speed goes up by the factor that their rotational inertia goes down.